after Crocs rematch with Bane, we have the Ultimate Nightmare Alliance. We are covering uh, Batman 494, 495, and in between those two, we have Detective Comics 661. The Batman issues are written by Doug Mensch, with pencils by Jim Aparo, inks by Tom Mandrake and by Wyacek, and lettering by Richard Starkings, and co-edited by Jordan B. Gorfinkel. And the issues of Detective Comics were written by Chuck Dixon, with pencils by Graham Nolan, inks by Scott Hanna, and lettering by John Costanza. And all of this is colored by Adrienne Roy, and is executive edited by the legendary Denny O'Neill. Batman 494 opens with Robin escaping from the whole sewer scenario by the skin of his teeth. Elsewhere in Gotham, Joker pays Cornelius Sturk, a Batman villain who's shown up in a few previous storylines, but we didn't haven't covered, uh, a little social call proposing a team-up. At the mayor's mansion, Kroll tells Gordon that in 24 hours, Gordon will either have the escapees under control, or Kroll will have the, the governor deploy the National Guard, and he will destroy Joker, uh, Gordon's career. In the Batcave, Robin brings Batman up to speed on his encounters with Bane, as Bane does the same with his team at their safe house, while Trog repairs the injector controls from the damage that Croc did. That night, Batman goes on the hunt for Stirk. Meanwhile, Scarecrow heads to a bar and interrogates a goon for the Joker's aims and location. Apparently, Joker is planning to go after Commissioner Gordon. Batman finds Stirk's lair and his diary, and draws pretty much the same conclusions as the bat signal goes up. At GCPD, Stirk uses his hypnosis power to pose as Batman and tries to kill Commissioner Gordon. The real Batman arrives just in the nick of time and takes down Stirk. On a nearby rooftop, the Joker fumes. Stirk showed up the plan as they wanted Gordon alive. However, as he leaves, the Scarecrow shows up with a better suggestion. How about they go after the mayor instead? I never should have used Stirk. Too unstable. After all, he's crazy. Indeed. Eh? After my visit to the Eight Ball, I knew I'd find you somewhere near Gordon. Scarecrow, what a bizarre surprise. And I'm offended, Joker, that you went to such a rank amateur in the realm of fear when the Master was readily available. Meaning you, of course. But maybe I thought I could control Stirk, eh? And how wrong you were. Bad choice, Joker. And it makes me angry. In fact, I'm tempted to give you a dose of my fear. <laughs> Just try it, Scarecrow. I'm sure I'd find the experience highly amusing. I'd prefer taking Stirk's place. But this time it must be an equal partnership. No one controls anyone. Just what do you have in mind, if you may use the term on cranium-packed straw? The police commissioner is peanuts. If you want to bring fear and chaos to Gotham, why not go straight to the top? Terrorize the mayor? Hmm. I think I like it. <laughs> on the roof of GCPD... Sarah Gordon berates Batman as she takes the traumatized and freaked out commissioner downstairs. And elsewhere in Gotham, at the mayor's mansion, Scarecrow and the Joker have Mayor Kroll, plenty of fear gas, and a telephone. And that, Scarecrow, Joker, and Kroll, are also where we open Detective Comics 661. Joker and Scarecrow have forced Kroll to cancel the National Guard deployment, and then had him call the papers to slam Gordon's response. For their next trick, they're going to have him provoke a firefighter's union strike. And just in time, too, as Firefly is on the rampage, having set fire to Elmo's Pier, which includes not Coney Island. Batman tasks Robin with backup as he goes to fight Firefly on the roller coaster, but Firefly manages to get away easily, Batman more by the skin of his teeth. Robin says to Batman that they need to fight smarter, not harder. After some consideration, Batman agrees and puts Robin, who has previously demonstrated his immense proficiency at the detective side of things, in charge of tracking down where uh, Firefly is going to hit next. Elsewhere, Detweiler, Scarface, uh, Ventriloquist's attorney, 
tells Ventriloquist that Scarface is probably in a precinct ev evidence room. Back at stately Wayne Manor, Alfred tells Bruce that he is severely worried about Bruce's health. Back at home, Tim researches Firefly and decides to check out his old orphanage. He gets there and finds the place abandoned, save for a, mon a nun. She says she remembers uh, Garfield, that's Firefly's real name, and his sister, Amanda. Robin didn't know about her, but as he turns to leave, the nun vanishes. Begs the question, ninja or ghost? Or perhaps, ninja ghost? Elsewhere, Riddler and his crew are going to put the caper together only for Riddler's challenge later to GCPD getting blown off due to basically the fact that there's all the other Arkham inmates going and running around doing their thing, and God, who has time for just a conventional heist? So, Robin makes an anonymous call, which leads to Officer Montoya and another beat cop coming to visit Firefly's sister. Robin listens in their conversation and puts together a series of possible targets, places where prospective adoptive parents promise to take the two to, which he then uses to narrow down the list based on places that Firefly had already burned down, and then provides that list to Batman and the two split up. Batman catches up with Firefly on top of a burning furniture warehouse, which used to be a theater on that list, and as the two fight and plummet into the warehouse, the issue ends. Our final issue of this installment, Batman 435, opens as Batman and Firefly both barely escape by their skin and their teeth, but still, Firefly is free. Elsewhere, to help deal with the whole situation, Azrael goes on patrol. That day, Alfred reminds Bruce that there is a charity dinner this evening that he is obligated to attend, like it or not. Elsewhere, Police and Ivy has a bunch of goons prepared for her plan for the evening, and with Bird monitoring odd activity at the Gotham Civic Center, that's where this probably will go down. And on top of all of this, Scarecrow and the Joker are gearing up for another crank call for the mayor. And it turns out that the fundraiser Bruce is going to is also at the Gotham Civic Center. As Bane watches him enter, he's, or everyone enter, he sees Bruce Wayne and determines that Bruce must be Batman. Bruce is mainly worried about the lack of a police presence. That's because GCPD has gotten a call from Kroll saying he's been kidnapped by the Joker. True. And that he's been held by an old amusement park. False. At this point, Bruce notices a very heavy perfume scent in the air and then slips nose filters up his nose as Poison Ivy makes her presence known and ushers off all the gentlemen, including Bruce, who plays along. Bane spots this and tasks Bird with tailing them. At Ivy's greenhouse base, Bruce slips away and changes into the bat suit and puts the kibosh on her plans, managing to take her down. At the amusement park, Gordon sends in a SWAT team, only for them to discover a bomb, which in turn blows up and kills them. And at their safe house, Scarecrow and Joker are ecstatic. And at Bane's safe house, Trog and Zombie wonder if Joker and Scarecrow, together, could take out Batman. Bane makes it clear that that won't happen. He won't let it. After the last few issues about a selection of B and C list members of the rogues gallery, this episode puts Batman up against the big guns. Um, with the biggest of all here outside of, you know, um, Poison Ivy, who is nothing to sneeze at by any stretch of imagination, being the unholy alliance of the Scarecrow and the Joker. And we're not done with two of those plot threads, or rather, one of those plot threads, uh, as Joke with Joker and Scarecrow, and Firefly, for that matter, are still out there. Speaking of which, quick note, um, I, I, as far as like the story goes, I do like how this story handles Firefly. Um, it's not quite doing him as the pyromaniac for hire kind of thing. Um, this is definitely more him setting stuff on fire for fun, as opposed to his more usual... You, you do a job you love, you never work a day in your life kind of scenario. Um, but it still sets him up as being a fairly dangerous opponent for Batman, and not just necessarily because he is, because Batman is in already kind of working as a handicap um, in these matches. So we're going to see more of this as the story continues.
thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 